do 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 I don't, nor do I. Consumer? Can we go with consumer? Is that safe? Are they consuming us? I, I hope not literally. That could be uncomfortable for one or both of us. But in I'd any event, okay. thank I'd be you. Okay. The royal you. Well, it's not the royal you, but thank you, whomever you are, for joining us here at Unqualified Gamers, episode 69. <laughs> I feel like there's a joke there. Uh, it's another episode, though. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For doing that. And it's like a super special episode. Why? Legitimately. N why? Because it's when it's when two people are having oral sex in opposite directions. Okay, so <laughs> John. That's, that's why here. it's a super special episode. John, you really hooked the listener slash viewer already. There, now, we all know this is a very high-class video game podcast. That's right. Clearly. So, I am Keep Cody. above the belt line. <clears throat> what belt line? That's the saying. I don't know that's, what you're talking about. That's how the saying goes. So, I'm Cody, and this, is, and this is John, and for the next three and a half to four hours, we're going to talk about nothing but video games. At all. I'll kill you if you keep me up that long. So to do that, let's start by talking about our weekends. Actually, here's what we are going to talk about. I, I have an agenda. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I didn't get it sent to me, but that's fine. Never. I literally wrote it down on a pen and pad of paper. This meeting has minutes. What? This is a call to order. This meeting has minutes. Who's recording okay, the minutes? Of order, point of order. I am the secretary, the president, the vice president, the treasurer, and the proletariat of it. What does that word mean? As well as the master of disaster. What of... is the proletariat? I literally don't know what that word means. King? Okay. Well, I'm glad that we went there at the start of the podcast, at the uh, beginning of episode 69 of Unqualified Gamers. So, hey, some things happened. We did actually missed a week last week because John and I were physically in the same place, and we were trying to enjoy others' company while we were in the same place physically, rather certainly, than... Certainly not the company of each other, but other people that were there. Yeah, there were other people there that who were entertaining, so John was not one of them. I tried to be enjoying their... I tried to be enjoying their company. How do you like that uh, present perfect participle? I think that's what that was. Anyway, so because we missed last week, we did not mention on last week's podcast, which didn't exist, that sadly Bob Hoskins passed away. He played Mario Mario in the Super Mario Brothers movie, and I did a little write-up on his memory and the Super Mario Brothers movie on our website, unqualifiedgamers.com. So please check that out if you, if you would like to. And on this episode, since we missed all that last week, on this episode we're going to talk about what, are, what you've been playing the last couple weeks. We're going to talk about a couple Let's Play videos that John and I watched, and we're going to talk about Let's Plays as an entertainment medium, I guess. Or something. Sure, because I I mean, I've, I've definitely viewed quite a few. I'm sure you have. Yeah, so we are going to get into that a bit, and John will also continue to rave about Hearthstone, which, speaking of 69ing, I'm pretty sure that's all you did all weekend when I was over. You 69 Hearthstone pretty hard. Oh, yeah. John likes that game an unhealthy amount. It's pretty good. And Although I'm out of, I'm out of money. I'm out of in-game money now, so now I... Now I kind of got to wait again. Well, we'll get into that and also talk about how and why we didn't actually play any video games when we were in the same place together, which is odd. Or very few video games were involved. Yeah, we played a couple. Because there were board games, and we'll, and we'll touch on those a bit. Yeah, we played lighter stuff. Tis true. So I, so I don't usually have a full weekend. I produce a radio show on... WGN Radio on Sundays. Right. And so for me, I get off work Friday, go home, got Friday night, Saturday, and then Sunday, around 3 or 4 p.m., I head downtown, downtown Chicago, 
and I work until 9, then I go home, and then, of course, it's Sunday night, and then my week starts. So this is, this is generally how my life is. I, I pretty much work a five-and-a-half-day week. But because we are a terrestrial radio show at WGN, mm-hmm. if we, we also carry sports. We carry Cubs games. We carry Blackhawks games. We carry a couple other sports games. Right. So when the Blackhawks play on a Sunday, I don't do a radio show because guess what? We actually air a Blackhawks game instead because they're really popular. That's right. That. So what that means is January, February, March, and April – tended to be late for me in terms of my schedule, I actually had like six or seven weeks in a row where I didn't do a radio show because the Blackhawks were playing. So I looked at my schedule and realized I had every week off in, every weekend off in April or most of them and thought to myself, I need to visit my friends. I never get to travel and visit my friends because it's hard to get out of town. I don't have a car, remember. It's hard based on public transit to get out of town on a Friday night after 6 when I got off work. And if you are generally scheduled to do something every Sunday night, that kind of cuts into your yeah, ex- weekend. Exactly, exactly. So you get the picture. Anyway, looked at my schedule, talked to John and a couple other friends in Madison, and then John said, well, hey, you're all thinking about hanging out with each other. I actually have a whole weekend, like four days off in a row, first weekend in May. Why don't you all come up here? Guess how much a round trip flight via Spirit Airlines is between Chicago and Minneapolis? I'd with, hope because you were flying Spirit like thirty dollars. With up airline is the worst. I know you hate it. I enjoy Spirit. I have no problem with it. But with seat upgrades to ensure that I got a uh, exit row seat with more leg room, with the upgrades, eighty dollars round trip. Just That's cheaper pretty, than some mega bus tickets. It's cheap. Yeah. It's very cheap. So I decided, what the hell? I'm cheap, but I'm not that cheap. Flew up to see John. That's how the weekend happened. And John had finished working about, it was like 78 12-hour shifts in a row. Is that right? It was um, it was 780 12-hour shifts in a row. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Not, not just 12-hour days. Like you would work a 12-hour shift, immediately get off and start a new one. Right. So it was about a year straight that you were working. Yeah, no, that math checks out. That's about right. Yeah, so so John finally had all these days, and it was really hard. And then, finally, Wednesday night, he was like, oh, I'm done with all this work. Now I can relax. And instead, three of his friends invaded his household. And then that's what happened. And we, and we spent a few days together, and you were an exceptional host, you and your wife, very... Good at hospitableness. She is definitely a better host than I am. She is a phenomenal host. Asks. Whichever, I don't know to whom to give the credit, but you both showed us a pretty good time. And that's good. That was great. So I enjoyed it thoroughly, and we were together, and uh, we shot a little bit of video when we were up there. So you can look for some video on our YouTube channel, and soon at unqualifiedgamers.com. Once I get around to editing it a little bit, and we recorded a little bit of audio. We did a lot of little things here and there, and that will turn into content for you in the next few weeks. In the meantime, for today's episode, let's talk about our little visit and what we did and didn't do and and how it went. So we played a lot of board games. And John, as we all know, is a board gamer. I am. We initially said we were going like, to get together and maybe we were going to like play through a game from like a... a role-playing game or something from start to finish. And I realized that I am far too old to be able to stay up at night for any, like, extended period of time anymore. So, like, midnight is the time I have to be in bed by, like, the latest, no matter what day it is now. So there was going to be no staying up, like, to... Because we never really did stay up super late on any of the day, nights you guys were here. That's true. Yeah. Um, so you guys did, but I didn't. Uh, no, I personally did. You they did. really didn't either. I mean, they, they were in bed at a reasonable time. I was ridiculous. For exactly. no reason. Exactly, for no reason. So um, so it w- became clear to me kind of right away that that was not going to be a thing we'd be able to do, like sit around and just play through a long video game together. Um, but the main reason why everybody was up anyway was to play board games, which is kind of... And I've said it before, if I had to choose between not playing nothing but board games or nothing but video games in my life, I would choose board games if 
I always had the opportunity to play them whenever I wanted to play something. The problem, of course, is that with a board game, especially board games that require multiple people, they require multiple people. And so you have to get those people together in the same place to play a board game. And that can be challenging. So and, often, Yeah, and board games that require multiple people especially require multiple people. That's exactly what I just said. Yeah. See? Right. So, look, I was completely clear. I, know, I, I was literally repeating you for no reason. I, I didn't stutter. I, so, did not, I did not have any reason to repeat you, and yet I did. So, uh, you know, there are so many board games that I love to play, but, like, the really, my favorite board games are all, like, tuned to have four to six players. And that's a, that's a lot of people to get together to set aside a large chunk of time because... Not only do they require that many people, but the games I like to play are often long as well. So, Like five to six hours long. Yeah, I mean, we played one that was kind of that epic. There was another one we played that was pretty long too. But like for the most part, they're pretty time-consuming. So you know, there's just not as much opportunity to play them. And that's why video games fill in that other hole in my life of games to play. Uh, because I can do them by myself. I can do them by myself. Right. So we played a lot of board games. We did. we did. We did. And I enjoyed a lot of them. I won a couple of them, shockingly, somehow. Which is, which is impressive. You even won a game you even won a game your first time playing, which I was impressed with. I don't think I've ever done that with games of that magnitude. That that did shock me. Well, okay, so we we played a game called Belfort, and I won't go super, super into it because this is a video game podcast, but in Belfort there are certain, there's a certain thing you can do when they were explaining hey, hey, the let rules. Me get the, let me, let me uh, get the rule book. Hang on. I'm going to go get the rule book. We're going to read through the rules. Yeah, let's do that. On air. It's a good podcast. Everybody knows how to play. Very good podcast. Well, there's a thing you can do, and they were explaining kind of how to buy buildings. You buy buildings in the game. And they said, well, you can buy this kind of building too, but uh, but we people don't usually buy that building. Like, we don't usually do that strategy. Pretty much no one ever buys this kind of building. So immediately, my brain goes to, I'm literally doing exactly what they told me no one ever does and seeing how it goes. And it went okay. Well, so, you won, so I'd say it went pretty well. I'd say it went pretty well. Uh, well, actually, it, it was actually a tie between you and me and I won by the tiebreaker rule. No, no, no. There are no ties. If there's a tiebreaker, there is a winner. That is why the tiebreaker is in the rules. Well, because what that, I'm saying is like... It declares a winner. Well, the initial scoring, though, like in terms of total score, we tied. And we had to go to tiebreaker rules. And you won. So, like, the Blackhawks winning in overtime is different than the Blackhawks winning in regulation. That's all I'm saying. I beat you in overtime... It went to overtime. You didn't. I didn't beat you in regulation. Okay, and you won the shootout. Yes, that was a surprisingly good analogy. You're welcome. Lacrosse is really becoming a more popular sport. That's what the Blackhawks play, right? And you, I'm ignoring that. And you actually, you kind of indirectly won a game you had never played. You had never played Mage Knight, correct? Well, no. A, cooperative wins are also wins. Like we won that game. I know we won that game, but you had yep. the highest score at the end of the game. Yeah, that's true. So there was another game that we played, uh, listener, that was, it's called Mage Knight, and it that was kind of our epic game, and it quite literally took up the entire day one day. Eight so or nine we, hours, right? Yeah, it was about nine. So we started at about noon, and I think we got done at nine o'clock. And it was yeah. phenomenal. It was great. It was a wonderful game. It was our all of our first, my first time playing it. Most of our first times playing it. It was very good. Yeah. So those are good but times. when you're sitting around kind of communally playing games like that, there is not nearly as much time to play video games because you are concentrating on this board game. That uh, Most of the time, the board games we play require a good amount of thinking. Yeah, yeah. you got to think about it. So you also, though, need some background sound, background noise, because you don't want to just be sitting there in a and quiet And you breathe area. through your fucking mouth, and you breathe so heavy, and it's horrible. It's kind of I the worst. do. Are you talking about me specifically? I thought you were just like doing a. Th- what were? You, what are you talking about? Okay, actually, don't do that. But I could see you doing that. I could see me doing that too, but only to make you mad, honestly. Right. Yeah. You actually so, I don't think you would do that ever uh, as a normal person. So generally, when I am at home in Chicago and I do a board game night with friends, which I don't have any friends here really anymore that are into that stuff, so it doesn't happen. But back in the day. 
we'd play a game I had called Seven Wonders, which takes about an hour, about an hour for a game, usually shorter, maybe 40, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And while playing that, I would put on the Skyrim soundtrack because it takes place, you're kind of like building a civilization in a little bit, not really, but kind of miniature version. And the Skyrim music is very good, and it, it's very fitting. So we were playing, one of the first games we played, I don't remember if it was Seven Wonders or another game, but one of the first games we played, we played the soundtrack to Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII, because I can't not mention it in an episode. That's right. That's good that we've hit our 69th episode in a row now, so that's good. Yeah, of mentioning the Fabula Nova Cristalla series. Right. So we played Lightning Returns uh, soundtrack because I knew it was really good. And then I left the room before we started our next game. And that proved to be a mistake, because apparently John's idea of background sound is playing Let's Play videos, which actually wasn't that much of a mistake, because it ended up filling our video game fix. But that was our way, apparently, of playing board games and filling that for John, and having background noise, and incorporating video games into our weekend. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's why I did that. And I was actually okay with it. The mistake part came into his selection his specific no. selections. No, in fact, I chose the perfect games for Let's Play Watching. Why? Uh, because they were fantastic games. Everybody loves them. Okay, you are a liar. No, that's, that's true. It's science. It's not true. So the first game he put on was Chrono Cross. And... Be careful what you say about Chrono Cross, because I think there's people that really, really like it. It wasn't good. It wasn't a good game. <laughs> it was the wor It's one of the worst sequels ever made. Here's how you make a sequel to Chrono Trigger, one of the best games ever made, with a bunch of lovable, really likable characters that you get very attached to. They were, lovable, they were lovable and they were really likable? Yeah, lovable and likable, both That's, of those things. Wow. Here's how you make a sequel. Let's let's build a game that takes place, we don't know when, maybe after the events, maybe not, featuring a brand new cast of characters that have nothing to do with the original, and then at some point in the game you find out that everyone in the original Chrono Trigger died in a fire. They died in a house fire. That's Chrono Cross. I mean, that seems legit. Really a feel-good game. Garbage. And, you know, the combat system wasn't awful. The story in and of itself, if you take out the whole reference to Chrono Trigger in any way, I guess okay. I don't remember it that well. But the load time, PlayStation could not handle that game, period. No, I, but that's a different problem. No, that is a... I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm so over that game. I used to call it Chrono Load Time. I have made fun of that game for years because of the load time. And John even pointed out, during one of the battles, like, d actually, during a number of the battles, the battle music actually slows down. It was pretty bad. the game can't handle processing the music to yeah, play. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's noticeable. Which so. is why it was great that we weren't playing it. See, that's why it was the perfect Let's Play game. And, and this is where I will actually agree with you to a degree. If you're really interested in the story, or you want to get that little nostalgia fix, then popping on a Let's Play, yes, I will say was much more enjoyable than, say, if I sat down and had to play the game. I mean, if you're looking for a game where you're trying to experience the story, but you yourself think the gameplay is not fun, what would be a better way to experience that story than to have somebody else play the not fun gameplay? That's almost That's literally perfect. exactly what I just said. It's perfect. Word for word. Yeah, only I said it better and more handsomely. Uh, okay, great. So it wasn't the worst choice of... So Chrono Cross wasn't the worst choice of game. It at least has good music, because good music is important. We talked about background music. Sure. I will admit it has good music. The uh, boss music in Chrono Cross is actually one of the few MP3s I have on my phone that has lasted... You've several... worn out the play button. On the yeah, MP3. I wore out the play button. I you wore, wore the out the play button on the MP3. Yeah, I, change, I change my songs and, and delete and, and add and remove songs regularly, as everyone does, but I, that's been on my phone for a couple years now. It's a really good song. It's very good boss music. So, good music. 
good music, questionable gaming choice, but I'll deal with that. And then there's the narrator. And this is a very important part of Let's Play videos. Yeah, it was more... So, I think I've only ever watched kind of kind of uh, decent to good Let's Play videos. I've never really watched a bad one. I, I feel like maybe, you know, those get kind of cut from the searches when you're searching for for Let's Play videos. Like, the cream rises to the top, right? That's kind of what the algorithms are supposed to do on the websites. Was that another reference to this being episode 69? My cream rises to your top, like I said. Um, do we have to edit that? Nope. We don't have to beat that out, right? So, um, I like that's why maybe I've never seen like a bad Let's Play. So we watched this Let's Play of Chrono Cross, and the narrator spoke every line of dialogue with accents, but they were... It was like... It was like if I were to try to start talking with, like, a Spanish accent, but, like, a boarded fetus style, like... Or it, it's it would be like it's the American equivalent of doing a horrible, like when you do improv shows, right? Yeah. You may do like a horrible accent of some other ethnicity. I think on this podcast I've attempted either Jamaican or French accents of some. When sort. Minnesota visited the podcast to talk to us, to talk yes. to, to talk to me specifically, um, believe it or not, that was not Minnesota listener. That was actually Cody doing. A Minnesotan don't impression. Tell them they don't so, know that. But it was that bad. It was that, like it was, and the thing is, is he was trying. He, he was, was doing voices. He was doing voices. Sure, and it what it did was it really detracted from the experience of watching it by a lot. Yeah, I would say old school RPGs with dozens to hundreds of NPCs do not need to be read aloud to you when it comes to the dialogue. Yeah, and, like, fountains of text. Right? Lots I of mean, text. Yeah, just a ton of it. So, like, the idea that you're going to sit there and read through all of it in different voices, especially a game like Chrono Cross, which has 120 characters or whatever it is, that is outrageous. Yeah. And it was, and it was kind of awesome. It, it like it, the worst way possible. It kind of awesome in the worst way possible, but it, it was um, it was it was not good. That part was not good. So I'd say for a let's play video, there are there are four things that matter. I, I'm making this up off the top of my head, so we'll see how I do. Four things that matter in a let's play video when you're watching it. Okay. The game and how interesting like the storyline is, things like that. The Music in the game, whether the music is fun to listen to. One could argue that would be encompassed in the game. Right. Okay, how yeah. how much the narrator talks? Yep. I, I forgot the fourth one. Um, I think it, the fourth one might be the game. No, the editing. The editing. Because do you want to watch them grind? I hope not. They should Probably grind not. off camera, which I, the guy in Chrono Cross didn't do, but I'm just saying that's a thing to keep in mind. That's about right, right? And the game makes five. So the game makes five. Right. So the next Let's Play that we watched was from a game that I hate. I hate this game. I didn't like it. It's hard. It's not very fun. It's not very good. The characters are terrible. Could it be that you're just not very good at it's it? It's Breath of Fire 3. Not a fan. Actually, I don't... I think it's stupid the most powerful character in the game is a veg is an onion. And that's dumb. I had Momo in my party for a while. Momo was the slowest character in the history of JRPGs. <laughs> if not video games. Might be an exaggeration. I no, think. she has an agility of negative one. That's not think, necessarily the, true. The numbers don't go negative in that game. Well, this one does. Okay. Momo was very bad. I didn't like a lot of it. All I remember about this game is a desert at the end, and you have to cross this desert, and it's hellaciously boring and difficult and terrible, and everything about it is wrong. And then you reach a tower, and you fight God. 
which I don't think is a spoiler because apparently you fight God at the end of every Breath of Fire game. And if you've never played a Breath of Fire game, then, well, now you know what you're getting yourself into. You play the game to fight God. And I had a problem with that. That is accurate. So, uh... The the thing the the theme that you can see then listener is like between these two let's plays that we watched, the theme was we I picked games that were long, uh, specifically because we played long board games and I knew they would kind of sustain the whole board game as we played it. So that was actually really to be honest the only criteria that I based my choices on as to the let's play we were going to watch. I just kind of found the first one that was available on the game that we played. Because I think you can literally find a Let's Play of probably any game ever made at this point. Because the internet. Maybe. So that was the only criteria I used. Now, Breath of Fire 3, and oh, and they were games that I had played before. Because they were, to be honest, it was just like the first thing my mind thought of. Which is weird, right? So, um, yeah. But the Breath of Fire 3 one was voiced by an English guy. Um... English as in overseas England. Like um, British. British. Like, like British. We have a British audience. So we do. We welcome. do. Absolutely we do. Um, but most of our audience is probably British. I feel like you just made that up. No, I think it's probably true. So um, it was voiced by a British guy, and he did not read every line. In fact, he, I don't think he read anything. He read a few lines at near the beginning. Just a few, though. Right. But for the most part, um, he kind of just commentated on the experience. But the thing that I liked the most about his Let's Play, and I actually really did like it when we were watching it, is that he explained where secrets were, and he showed you them as he was as he was doing them, and when he was like setting up his when he was setting up his party when he was doing all of the customization stuff that happens in role playing games because in, inevitably you're customizing your characters in role playing games somehow right um, he explained why he chose like the certain things he did for the different characters and so it gave you I think it gave you a better understanding of just the game system in, like the game systems in general what was happening at that time in the story and if you ever wanted to play the game, like, the better way to play the game. Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. For a game that I that I don't have many fond memories of, I, I actually really enjoyed it. He was softer spoken. It was almost like golf commentary. Not not quite that dramatic, but, but definitely more muted in uh, enthusiasm and energy, but not in a bad way, just in a very... Very casual, kind of, you're hanging out with a friend, and you know when you're in a room full of people playing video games, if you're all focused on the video game, very little conversation happens. He's kind of like, if he's, if I'm sitting around playing a video game, and you're on the couch, on the other couch, reading a book, or doing something on your iPad, or whatever, and I occasionally just say a couple thoughts about the game, That kind, that's the kind of feeling I got from it. Yeah, and it was good. And we watched that for over half of that game. You know, and he would break for, for, if he needed to grind for experience in the game, he would break, do that off-camera, and then come back. And so, like, the the overall, like, his overall Let's Play ended up being, I don't know, like, it was like 160 videos, and we did not watch the whole thing, and they were each about 7 to 10 minutes. So, it, like, it wasn't nearly this, the length of that game. Right. By any, by any means. But yeah, definitely a few hours. So yeah, that was like, good. We like should, three, four and a half, five hours ish. We should probably find a link to that video and make a, and uh, post a link to that. Yeah, we could. Let's play serious. But it was it was good. And I I get that you would choose RPGs, but why not like Final Fantasy IX or Final Fantasy VIII? There's a game nobody wants to play. Because I watched both of those before when those two guys came up like the last time. Legitimately, That's we watched. Answer. Those. Yeah, good answer. So they had already been watched as. In a in the exact same circumstance. Okay then. Well, and I don't want to torture that. anybody by turning on Final Fantasy VIII because that game's not even fun to watch. Yeah, it's true. I still say Secret of Mana would have been nice. Sure, maybe, maybe next time it'll give you an excuse to come visit again. 
now I now I have a reason to come visit, so I can watch someone else play Secret of Mana while I'm winning a board game. Exactly. Fell for it. Well, we didn't. So in addition to the lads' plays, we didn't. Well, first of all, I listened to the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack about 11 times. You did. You seem to really like it. It's really good. There's a lot of live instrumentation. It's right. super good. I cannot get enough of it, and I'm really, really excited for Mario Kart 8. And some video games were played, so I bought John NES Remix 2 for his birthday, and we actually shot our first and probably only for a long time ever video game video review, which I have on my camera and will be editing and putting on our, our YouTube site soon. So right. we won't get into NES Remix 2 because... We had a lot to say about it, and hopefully that's entertaining for you. It's I would... really bad. Yeah, so don't buy it until you watch our review. Let's just put it that way. And one other game was on the TV a lot, and on an iPad a lot, and on another iPad a lot. It was pretty much a lot of the game was happening. And I, I did not realize that John was so hard for this game, but, but my god, you were having a love affair with Hearthstone in front of me. I and, felt like I should and, leave the room. The, the thing is, is, it wasn't just me either. Like, our other our other friends play it as well. I'm not singling you out, but I, as a guy that's no, never played the game, right. the enthusiasm the three of you had for the game was astounding to me. I know, and I, I've talked about it for the past few episodes, so I definitely don't want to go into detail. But I explained before that, like, one of the things you can do in the game is go into the arena and enter a draft and do, like, a draft deck. But that costs money every time you do that. And I'd just been building up this supply of money. So I had this overwhelming amount of money to spend in the arena, and that's what allowed me to play the game for so long, so many times in a row. Because normally, I wouldn't play the game like that. Because when you just play the game... We'll call it just just for fun, right? When you play the game just for fun, you for three victories in the game, you get ten gold coins. Now, it costs a hundred gold coins to buy a pack. So, if you do the math, you'd have to win 30 games to buy one pack, which is stupid and efficient. I've also talked about the quests that they give you, where if you do a, like a certain number of things, they give you like 40 gold, and you get one of those a day. So, and you can store up to three. So, like, the efficient way to do it is to get two or three quests, knock them all out, and then kind of not play the game again for a while. And that's how I had been playing it. But I played it like that for a long time. I didn't buy any packs. And I finally had a good amount of money saved up. And the arena costs 150 gold. And you, do, you draft this deck, and then you play until you lose three times. Well, that's an excuse to play a bunch. And so I had all this money saved up. I had enough to, to enter the arena like six times without winning any extra money from the arena. And that's at least three games per time because you can lose, you have to lose three games. So even if you lose every single game, that would be 18 games of Hearthstone that I had like right in front of me. And I did not lose every time. So um, I just had a lot of, of we'll call it progression, right? Because the progression of the game is building up your card, your decks. It's building up your your virtual cards. Yeah. So I don't, like, I don't really like to play the game if I'm not progressing in some way. And I don't... Yo, go ahead. I don't feel like winning three games for ten coins is, like, an efficient way to progress. So, like, right now, I don't have, like, I've got my quests all done. Um... I am out of money for arena decks, so right now, like I don't have an, ex- I don't have a reason to play it. So I like I don't want to play it right now. And that I think that, sense. I think that that's actually very characteristic of free-to-play games. And I don't really want to go off on that tangent, all that like very deep. I know we've talked about free-to free-to-play games before, but in most free-to-play games, eventually you'll hit a paywall that either takes time. Or time, it's almost always time in some way, time of playing the game or time of waiting to get energy back before you can move on and play again. And I, f- I feel like that it is always there, kind of in every free-to-play game. And this is just that paywall. That paywall is you only get one quest a day. So if you're not willing to pony up real money and you're like me and you don't feel like 
grinding for 10 gold at three wins a pop is progression, is like efficient, it's something yeah. you don't want to do, then you just have to wait until the next day to get a new quest. That makes sense. I understand. Yeah. I understand. And so you guys just happened to catch me at a point where like I had all of this money to play with arena decks. And arenas still, I, I, I say the, the best thing about that game. Well, so in, in for the sake of this discussion, let's refer to that process of accumulating new cards and kind of getting decks of money and things like that. Let's let's refer to that as progression, right? Right. So I think what's really great about this game and what it sounds to me like I might like the game as well now that you talk about it is that there is that sense of progression. Because if you think about it, a lot of free-to-play games, like, you want to play them for a while and then not play them and then come back to them later. You know what I mean? Because you hit kind of a paywall after a while. Right. Which is kind of what I literally just said. I'm really glad I had all those original thoughts just now. Right. So do you have anything to contribute to this discussion, or do you just want me to come up with all the insights? Because I, I can keep doing that if you want. I think I'm going to leave this one up to you. Okay. Well, that was it. I'm done thinking about it. A lot of insights. About it. it was good. But, but apparently, if you're looking for a game that is just going to suck you right in, play Hearthstone. Because our friends, we're also it's watching... Free. It's, it's free. free. It is free. And that's it's a, free. I mean, it, you, like, you cannot... You do not have to spend a dime to play it. Like, you, that you is what nothing, free means, in you have, fact. You have nothing you to lose. You have nothing to lose other than, other than your time. And it's one of those things where, like, if you hate it, which I'm sure there are people out there that don't like it, and that's fine. But if you hate it, you don't have to play it, and you didn't spend any money to buy it. I mean, it seems like a likable game because our friends were watching you play it and helping you build decks and talking to you about deck builds and things right. like that. So, I mean, custom CCGs, I have a long history. Well, you played Magic, right? I, I did, but I didn't play it. I played it when I was much, much younger, and then I stopped playing CCGs. So okay. I, I, I didn't, like, play it at a time where I got serious about it. You know what I mean? Because I have been serious about CCGs. You back have. in back in middle school, Decipher Incorporated, Decipher's Star Trek and Star Wars CCGs, I was mad into those. You were. M more Star Wars because that's what all my friends played and only a couple of my friends played Star Trek. But I was wild into that game. You were. Like for the Star Trek cards I got the Fajo collection, which was this like eighty dollar set of 20 limited edition cards, you know, I, I mean I was really I went to tournaments I traveled to a couple different tournaments. I played at a couple tournaments at Gen Con. Like, I was way into it. And there was and like I, gaming club after school. We started a gaming club after yep. school one day of the week. So I was really, really, really into it. Especially like seventh, eighth grade, freshman year of high school. Like, really into CCGs. So I have a feeling I would actually love Hearthstone as much as, if not more, than you do. And I will download it soon. Yeah, and it, you know, it came out on iPad, which I talked about, which is great. And they have plans for an iPhone version if you, like, f for instance, like me, have an iPad that doesn't connect to the Internet when he's certain places because if there's no Wi-Fi there, it can't connect to the Internet, and you have to connect to the Internet to play Hearthstone. So once it came out with the iPhone version, I could, you know, I could literally play that anywhere I had my phone, right. which, also is, which, which is everywhere. Also useful if you like to use phones with very small screens that make it literally impossible to see anything. That's right. I'm sure that Blizzard would implement it in a way that it still looked great. I mean, because they probably they don't will. make bad. They don't make bad products. They don't make bad products, and it they'll make it good on the bad device, but it's still a bad device. Oh, and a PSA for you, listener. Uh, f f uh from right now. And it's still going on till I think the forever future. Blizzard has re has released Rock and Roll Racing and Lost Vikings. They're two console games that they made back on the Nintendo and Super Nintendo for free through their Battle.net service. You just have to go on Battle.net and you can download them. And I'm pretty sure they've got like controller implementation and all that stuff too. Good. So more free games. Lost Vikings was actually pretty badass. It was a really good game. I didn't play Rock and Roll Racing. But I could for you free. Could for free, which means you don't have to pay a penny. You don't have to pay a dime. You don't have to pay a quarter. You don't have to pay no a nickel. change. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay a a piece of change. A single piece of change. Multiple pieces of change. Bills. That, you don't have to pay bills. And that is change I can believe in. 
Back to you, John. That's, that's horrifying. That is pretty good. Yeah. So hey, do uh, you have anything else you want to talk about from the weekend? Because I was gonna, we need to catch up on what our listeners have been playing. Last thing we did was we started in Final Fantasy VII again, and we started with those Advent Children. Like, there's a, a mod you can download for the uh, Final Fantasy VII PC version mm-hmm. for new models that somebody has created. Um, and it's just some dude that did it, and they're uh, like new character sprites, new battle sprites, which was pretty impressive, new field sprites. Uh, that are in the game, and, and I guess they're not sprites because it's a 3D, they're models. You like 3D models for that stuff. And it's impressive that one guy did that, and from from what I understand, it's like through the whole game. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool, and they look pretty good. A, a little out of place because everything else, if it's not like up character model, is the old model. And so it looks a little goofy, having all these like way up models next to these not up models. Uh, but yeah. but it still looks good, and it plays well, and it's Final Fantasy VII, and it's fun. It is. Yeah, overall it looks really good, and that mod comes with the soundtrack mod, because if you right. get Final Fantasy VII on Steam, they replace the soundtrack with midis, something to do with the publishing, original publishing, or original capabilities of the game. I don't know why, but... Anyway, it's not the original soundtrack, which is... There was a reason. That's not just like an arbitrary change that they would have done yeah. for for no reason. I mean, there was a reason they had to do that. Yeah, but this Advent Children graphics mod and many other mods, I believe, uh, fix that and patch that up so that you get the original soundtrack with it, which is clearly preferable. Yeah, it's great. And like John said, yeah, uh, most of the characters we saw, we got, we got to... Uh, Don Corneo's place? No, we basically got to the sh- the part where you infiltrate Shinra. Yeah, we were about to the next thing Shinra. that would happen. That was going to yeah, happen. so still in Midgar, but halfway into Midgar, most of the character models had been upscaled very slightly, except the main characters upscaled a lot. Right. So as John said, so in battle it looks really phenomenal because it's just your upscaled models. But then and if the I'm, enemy sprites or the the enemy models have been upscaled as well. All of them or some of them? Some of them. Some of them. So, yeah, so a lot of it does look better. So, yeah, in the field, a little bit awkward. And they still use the same pre-rendered backgrounds. So some of those, I mean, they look a little grainy, I guess. Yeah, that was some of the most kind of jarring stuff. Yeah, very grainy. So it's a very, like, high-res, detailed 3D model running around against a very pixelated kind of grainy right. background. But it, it works. It, it You know, you can only do so much with the patch, but it's hella still worth playing that way. Yep. Absolutely. So that yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good recommendation. I almost forgot about that. And now, listener, we asked you. We we always ask you what what are you playing this weekend? You can comment and let us know on this podcast or anywhere else on unqualifiedgamers.com or on Google Plus. Here's what people are saying because John and I like to gauge how relevant we are. Is that why we do this? The answer is not. I can tell you that right now. Okay, great. Well, we're going to do it anyway. So, Percy the Gamer has been playing Titanfall, Transformers, Fall of Cybertron, and Breath of... Wait, BF4. Battlefield 4. Yeah, that's probably not Breath of Fire 4. Correct. So, Titanfall. Yeah, you know, I... I don't like first-person shooters, and I had an urge to, like, buy that the other day. Isn't that weird? Why? Because the idea of giant fucking mechs is awesome. Isn't it? It's awesome. I don't know. You tell me. The premise sounds really good. I had Mech Warrior 2 for my PC back in the day, and that was kind of fun, I guess. I, I just, like, I had no interest in the realistic first-person shooters like Call of Duty and Battlefield that came out. I had no interest in those at all. Right. But once we've moved into, like, the realm of this of this now first-party AAA... It's not first-party... It is, it is first party because it's it's Xbox publishing it, right? Yeah, it's it's AAA. Yeah, tri- that's not the same thing. Those are not mutually exclusive. Um, but now oh, that we've yeah. moved now that we've moved into the realm of AAA games in like this supernatural space, I mean that it interests me. Like because it's something I. Well, it's not like I can go enter a battlefield and shoot a gun and kill somebody now, but. Theoretically, I could, but I could never get in a giant mech. Or could I? (laughs) 
I don't understand how that's that weird. Happened. Your argument means literally nothing to me. Okay. So we're going to move on. Okay, let's move on. Kieran was planning on uh, Assetto Corsa, with multiplayer being on the horizon, but having drank like I have so far, I don't see it happening. Good to know. That but must I have... be a strategy game, then, because those you cannot play when you're drunk. Uh, I've played some Civ Five, not sober in my day. And how did that work out for you? I don't know, probably not that hard. Probably, Once you figure out your probably strategy... Won't. It probably didn't do that well. All right, probably not. Yeah, uh, probably. But I, but he has this... Well, Kieran says, but I have my PS2 and a copy of Scarface calling my name. Mm, that's a fantastic movie. I don't think or that's... Or game? <laughs> Apparently, that's uh, maybe that's a game you can play. All right. I've actually heard it's really good, the Scarface video game. Really? It's on, it's on a list of one of the best video game movie adaptations, I guess. I uh, I don't believe you. Although that list excluded Goldeneye, so can't be that good of a list. Right, that's true. G-V-G-I-N-U, Project X... So that's the person's name, by the way. Mm-hmm. Project I'm X... I'm sorry, your parents hated you. Give okay, you. yeah, giving... Give Gen... Give uh, Project X Zone, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, Dead Island, and Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge. That was your favorite game, right? The Ninja Gaiden 3. Ninja Gaiden 3 recent... was the good one, right? Oh, my God. I recently saw on Google Plus someone posted something from Ninja Gaiden 3, and there were eight or so comments that said, Loved Ninja Gaiden 3. Oh, great game. And I almost had an aneurysm. Okay. So... I didn't Maybe like you're that wrong. Game. Maybe Listen, that's nine people saying it was great, and then there, there's you saying it's not. I don't hear anybody else saying it's not But they're they're wrong. They're wrong. Oh, okay. Go to unqualifiedgamers.com and search for Ninja Gaiden three. If you want to hear me angry, I try not to like rant on this on this podcast. You know, I I, I feel personally, and I think unqualified gamers. I think John and I both very strongly feel video games are a thing that should be celebrated, and it's. It, people make a fun toy thing for you to play and enjoy, and they tell stories, and they do cool things. Like, let's celebrate them. There, There's very little having to do with video games that can legitimately anger me. You know, because it's like, if something doesn't work out, or something's not perfect, or something's not great, you know, it's like... What am I, what am I going to do? Let it ruin my life, ruin my there day? There was an expectation issue for you in that game, and that's what angered you. And that's what angered me. It, it was an expectation issue based on precedents they had set in two phenomenal games. Ninja Gaiden and Ninja Gaiden 2, I will rave about endlessly and have on this podcast. Sure. Ninja, I mean, Ninja Gaiden was almost transcendent, the experience it was. Those are two of the most memorable games I've ever played. Mo- the most memorable action right. games, for sure. I, just unbelievable. But yeah, that that happened. So if you want to hear a rare occurrence of me being very, very upset, check out my Ninja Gaiden 3 podcast. Moving on, what else are people playing? Uh, let's see. Jay Fleming, Titanfall, Ninja Gaiden 3. Is this a joke? <laughs> is this a joke? <laughs> is this trolling me? And, Jay, and I think I remember Jay as one of the people that really liked it. it, it get, maybe if you didn't play the first two... Or if you just play a ton of action games, you're used to the variety. But like, I don't play a lot of games like that. So when when I loved one and two, that was my entire frame of reference. And then for three to break that mold, it just killed me. So Jay has been playing Titanfall, Ninja Gaiden, Three Razor's Edge, Killer Instinct, Xenoblade Chronicles, Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and Ashura's Wrath. Did they re-release Killer Instinct? Is there a new? There port? is. There is. It's not a new port. They released a free-to-play version of the game where you buy new characters. Like, you start off with two or three fighters. It's on Xbox One only. It was a downloadable exclusive. And it... it You get two characters and then you can buy more. And they released them, like, one at a time. Why have I never heard of this? Probably because you don't have an Xbox One. The dirty secret is that, as far as fighting games go, I don't think Killer Instinct is considered to be a good one. Oh, so, really? like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like in as far as the fighting game community goes, they kind of kind of crap all over it. So well, it was right. there was a there was a lot of buzz about how it was kind of a weird reboot when the Xbox came out, and then the game came out came out, and I guess it was a huge surprise at how good it was. 
So that's what I've heard, is that the, the Xbox One exclusive Killer Instinct is actually quite good. All right, Jay, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, Chad has been playing Bravely Default, Final Fantasy VI on the iPad. He says it's much better than he thought it would be. So I own good. that. I have not started it yet. All right. And more Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and then in parentheses he says, hard, exclamation point. So either he thinks Candy Kong is really sexy, or it's a hard game. I think it's the first thing you said. Probably. Or Dixie Kong. Which one's hotter, Dixie Kong or Candy Kong? I think Dixie Kong's like six. So Dixie Kong, <laughs> that's gross. I think Candy Kong is a stripper. So that's I think that that's... Probably the one. He's the experienced one. Okay. Miles has been playing Fallout New Vegas, Battlefield 4, Tomb Raider, Last of Us, and Minecraft. I should probably play Battlefield 4 since a lot of our audience seems to enjoy that game. And I think that y you would probably like it. I don't think it's a game for me. But well, duh, you don't like FPSs. You're right, but you're like a Call of Duty fan. I think you'd probably really like it. Now, as of, as of two weeks ago, Jamie Butterworth, I'm intent on beating Metroid 2, and I'll be playing some NES Remix 2. Don't know what else, but I'm sure I'll be playing something that isn't old as F, and I'm censoring him there. No, Metroid 2 was the one on Game Boy, right? Um, yes. That one was really good. Was it? It was. It was really good. I never played it. I wanted to, it's but... Samus's Return, right, or something like that? It... Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Return of Samus, yeah. I yeah, it was, it was very good. Yeah, I bought the cart at, like, a flea market or where something. Where the hell are you ever going to be able to play that now, though, right? Like, where do you put a Game Boy game to play it? You don't have an original Game Boy. Yeah, I do. Who the hell wants to play on that thing? I also have a Game Boy Color. Yeah, okay, that'd be okay. And a Game Boy Advance. I don't know if that plays regular Game Boy games. I think it does. Because, remember, the Advance had the backwards compatibility still, but then the Nintendo DS lost wow, it. Wow, did that really go that far back? Uh, yeah. Regular Game Boy games? That is astonishing. I like know. 12 years of a catalog of games to play. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. So, well, Jamie, I, I hope you beat it. I'd be impressed if you did. And I hope you liked NES Remix 2. I, there is an audience for it. It just isn't John and me. Right. And again, a review will be forthcoming for that. Now, Donovan, definitely going to do some Call of Duty Ghosts, Halo 4, and best of all, Titanfall in all caps. Maybe, maybe we should think about renting this Titanfall thing. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan has been playing Minecraft and Mario and Luigi Dream Team, which I have the demo of that, but I haven't played. Have you played any of the Mario and Luigi games? I've played the like the very first one that ever came out for Game Boy Advance. I think it was just Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, maybe? I think that sounds about right. Did you like and it? It was awesome. Yeah. And I just never played another one, but it was really good. I have heard super good things, so that's why I got the demo, but yeah. I'm afraid to play it because I really good. haven't beaten Bravely Default, so I have some things to do. What else? Vintage Gamer has been playing on the... Oh, oh, he's on the range all weekend, but if possible, some Final Fantasy Tactics Advance for some easy, portable fun. Now, you played those games, and you loved them, right? Um, the, the Game Boy ones? I didn't, lo I, didn't, I didn't dislike them at all. They were good. They were fun. They were not as good as Final Fantasy Tactics. I think okay. that... But tactics they were trying to reach a different audience, I think. I think, yes. I think that, that Tactics Advance tries to reach a bit of a younger audience, and it's not quite, it's not nearly as complicated with some of the mechanics. Still very fun, though. The judge system, some people disliked the judge system. I liked it. I thought it was fine. I didn't have a problem with it. It got a little annoying sometimes, but it was it, overall it was well done. Okay. So they're good games. Um, tactics Advance 2, I, I think I liked... Either slightly more or slightly less. But yeah, uh, they're good games, so I think that's a really good... And he's had some easy portable fun. They're definitely right. easier than Final Fantasy Tactics. So yeah, absolutely. That's a good choice. I can't, I'm not going to knock anybody for, for those games. Now, the official DJ Lunar Scratch just finished exams yesterday, and that means I can finally get into Infamous Second Son. Only played like four hours so far, but it's definitely worthy of Game of the Year. I, have heard, I have heard some people... So I fi I've heard multiple people talk, and like people that I know that actually play video games. So people here in Minnesota, and uh, th they have both said that it is like the best-looking game that they have ever seen. In their the best-looking game they've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. But the common complaint with both of them was that it is not 
like it's not long enough. Like it's it's very short from what they both said. Hmm. So they were looking for like more. They wanted more infamous, but that the game itself is awesome. Well, I mean, I don't mind the short. I don't either. But that was their that was their big complaint. And and keep in mind that we're probably not like your your average Joe gamer that buys four or five games a year. You don't think we're the average Joe gamer? No, we're not the average Joe gamer. What, I, what is, I certainly am not. What? Why? We buy more games? I buy far more games than like five games a year. I play way more video games than your average video game player by far. You think? I would say, oh, yes. Absolutely. And you think the average gamer does not have... You think the average gamer has more free time than we do? I think the average gamer spends the free time differently than we do. Like, we are able to... You and I are both in positions where I think if we want to, we would spend all of our available free time on, like, a single video game, like you did on Lightning Returns. Yeah. You, you could have played through that game in, like, a week and a half, two weeks, I bet, if you had really wanted to. Yeah, I would say, maybe. I don't think Average Joe Gamer does that. See, and I, but I think there's a lot of gamers out there that could have binged it and beaten it in five days. I don't think those are average Joe gamer. I don't think that's average Joe Call of Duty player or Titanfall player. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I I see a lot of you know I see a lot of opinions on uh, from about gaming from gamers on Google Plus and right. clearly people that are on Google Plus talking about gaming and making gaming videos are not your average gamer. There are people that are very into video games. But the, the, it's interesting that you just even brought that up because it got me thinking, you know, a lot of people do complain that some games are too short these days, and I don't think that people like you or I are going to complain about that as much. No, I mean, I am all for, like, if the game is a good gaming experience from start to finish, and they told their story in four hours, I think that that's totally legit. Yeah, me too. And it, but what it, I also don't think that some of the more extreme gamers or some gamers who are able to set aside three days to binge a video game hardcore, I don't think they realize how many gamers there are like us who have a limited amount of free time and who have lots of responsibilities. Like, you have a baby. I have an extra job. And I'm doing YouTube video stuff now. Like, like there are things... There are a lot of people who don't have... 20 to 30 hours to spend on every AAA title. and That's very true. I think that if you, consumer, slash listener, slash viewer, uh, are not one of those people and you are able to devote a lot of time, that's great. And I get why you'd be upset that a game's not 40 hours, but there are people like John and me who love video games. We like to be able to beat them that are really good, and if it's only 8 or 10 hours, I'm really okay with that, and I think it's worth the price. Yeah, it's tough for me. It is really tough for me to start a game now anymore that I know is going to take like 80 to 100 hours to beat. Yeah. Like, it's hard It's hard for me to do that. It really is. And I, again, like I said, I play a lot of video games, but those experiences now, like those long console experiences, for instance, those are the kind of the ones I'm talking about, like Lightning Returns, that kind of thing. They're the types of games that you can't just drop in for a half an hour and then jump out. Right. Like, you like you have to, like, sit down and you have to kind of get in the mood. You've got to get invested. You have to kind of pick up where you left off, so you have to kind of remember where you left off, that kind of thing. Which is why, like, lately I've been, I have personally been drawn to experiences like Risk of Rain, where one run is a half an hour to 45 minutes and then you're done. Mm-hmm. Right? That's, that's self-contained. Uh, Diablo 3, which I can literally jump in in 8 minutes, do like one bounty, and then jump out again. Hearthstone, which a game lasts 7 minutes. Um, like, that's why those experiences have been very compelling to me. I'm sure as Max gets a little older um, and doesn't need quite as much, like, one-to-one attention all the time, I'm sure I might I'd probably be able to get a little more time to do that sit-down concentrate on this one game for a longer period of time, but I just don't see it happening, like, right now. You know? Hashtag truth. Am I right? Nice. Put that and put that in the show notes. Hashtag truth. Not gonna put the, why would I put that in the show notes? Because it's a hashtag and it's true. 
I don't, I don't understand what you're even saying anymore. So a couple more, a little bit more feedback from what our audience has been playing lately, if I can find it. Uh, actually, Scott, one of our fans, Scott P., I'm going a little old school, Lost Odyssey, which you lent me. I did, based on a conversation we had on the last podcast we recorded about how I thought you would really like that. Yeah, so that's sitting on my coffee table right now. I may get into I may get into Lost Odyssey soon. And what else? Uh, so Vintage Gamer said, I'll just say the usual. I th- so he usually plays really good games, so we'll just assume it's really, really good. And we already talked earlier, he was the one playing Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. And also said, though been dying of laughter as my friend attempts to conquer goblins and ghouls. Is that different than Ghosts and Goblins? Must be this. I don't know. I think it's got to be the same thing. Did he mean super? Oh, ghouls and ghosts. Super yeah. ghouls, ghouls and ghosts. Ghouls well, and ghosts, ghosts. Ghouls. There's ghouls and ghosts, and there's super ghouls of ghosts. Ghouls and ghosts, and they're both horrendously difficult. But I thought there was another game called Ghosts and Goblins that like had a strikingly similar title to Ghouls and Ghosts, but is actually different. We I don't. I'm not sure. We wouldn't know that kind of thing. Uh, apparently not. I, I think Goblins and Ghouls might be a game, though, because I thought there was a game that's not Ghouls and Ghosts, but it has a very similar... I don't, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's a really hard game, so whatever it is, that's... I'm glad you're laughing, Vintage Gamer. I'm glad you're laughing. That's all. Jamie Butterworth, apparently having conquered Metroid 2, was going to play Child of Light. What is that? Uh... I don't know exactly what it is, but it just came out last week. It's a game with really good graphics, is all I know. It's all I've heard, is that it's beautiful. It's a beautiful oh, good. game. I, I hope you played it in high definition, Jamie. And Miles was playing some Minecraft and Skyrim at the same time, because why not? I don't know. I know nothing about about Minecraft, but that there's a lot of traveling in Skyrim, like a lot of walking. So maybe Here's... he was just walking a lot of the time. So I never played Skyrim, even though I bought it for my last roommate. And here's why. I would watch him play it, and he would he would literally walk into a field and a dragon would attack him, and he would kill it in two hits. Uh-huh. And that's seemingly all I ever saw. Like, I, ne- I, I get that the game starts out harder because you're at a lower level, but I never saw him struggle with a single battle ever. And the only battles he did struggle with were because a dragon would, like, fly into a tree and then only two pixels would pop out once in a while so he couldn't actually hit it. It felt like glitches were the only thing that was a challenge in that game. And it was, like, kind of difficult for the first couple hours you play it and then you just destroy everything. I found some of that game difficult when I was playing it, but I didn't get near the end because it was far too big of a game. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's why I never got into it. I mean... It's ultra popular. One of my coworkers actually put in over two or three hundred hours into the game. I think it was well over three hundred hours. That is actually. incredible. So I know some people are super into it. It seems like an awesome game. It just looked too easy for me personally. But then some people do things like try and max level their pickpocket skills and then steal everyone in the kingdom's clothing and like do weird stuff like that. So maybe Miles is doing that. I don't know. But either way, Minecraft and Skyrim probably good choices. Kiris, our listener slash audience member, Shadow of the Colossus. Aren't they remaking that in HD? Or does they, everybody just always demand they it? They remade that a long time ago. Oh, they did? Yep. Okay. And Christopher was going to play half an hour of Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Just half an hour, but I did manage to get video games in. Congrats, Chris. We're glad that you got those. Uh... And that's a good one. So that is a good one. I am I am shocked I, that we didn't play that game. I'm not shocked. I am disappointed in myself for not making you all play that game. That is kind of weird that we didn't play that, isn't it? It's very weird. But you yeah. you don't have four Wii remotes, right? Uh, I think I do. Total. Well, okay. Well, next time, that gives me a reason to go up. Oh, you know what it was? You know what it was? Is because you have your Wii U in your basement, and the Wii U does not have native GameCube controller ports. Right. That is what it is. And that was my problem. That's why I didn't push harder for because it. You can't play that game, right? You just can't play it on a Wiimote. You can't play it on a Wiimote. Yeah, it's not that good on a Wiimote. It's not that good on a Wiimote. So next time, I'll just bring up my Wii and four GameCube controllers. Perfect. I'll leave it at that. Perfect. So there's that. All right, then. That was fun. We talked about a lot of stuff. 
And yeah. I almost forgot. How could I forget this? In addition to all the videos we're going to be posting, last Saturday I posted my first ever, our first ever, it wasn't a Let's Play. It's just like a gameplay video. It's a kind of Let's Play. You played a game. And so I feel like a let's people can play. watch you play it. No, a let's play is when you you just have footage of the game and you occasionally comment or talk or whatever. Like this is just a supercut of me showing some gameplay and making jokes about the game. So that's a supercut. Our different. first supercut. So I posted my first supercut gameplay video, picture in picture, whatever whatever PewDiePie does. It's kind of like what PewDiePie does. Yeah. So go check that out on our uh, on our YouTube channel. Yeah, go check out PewDiePie on our YouTube channel. Go check out PewDiePie uh, doing Let's Plays on our YouTube channel. Yeah, maybe someday we'll have 28 million subscribers or whatever he's up to. Anyway, I posted a video of me playing Pac-Man Championship Edition DX+. Plus. John admitted he even he thought it was mildly entertaining. It so was good. Hope, thank you. Uh, hopefully people will find it funny. There are a couple other parts to that video I'm hoping to start posting over the weekend. So there's a little bit more of me playing that game. So you you can legitimately get a good idea of what that game is about and get a you get a good feel, kind of a sample of it to whet your palate. It's really fun. It was a really fun game actually, and, and not really hard or anything. So uh, check that out, please. I'll also be posting the NES Remix 2 review that John and I shot, as well as hopefully some other stuff. I don't really know. I don't really have a plan. I don't write things down. All I know is unqualifiedgamers.com is our website, and you can find all our stuff there, and uh, I'm very excited about that. How about you, John? That sounds a lot like you, to be Does excited it? about that. Yes. That's so Cody. Yes. 69. Are you sure that's not so Raven? 69. Yeah. It's when two people are facing opposite directions and administering oral sex on each other. See, because if you look at the number 69, right? So there's like the head, like, okay, I want you to envision that, like, the circular part of each number. So, okay, so look at 69 in your head. Okay. Right? And, like, the circular part, and then the phallic symbol is the genitals. And this is about the least sexy way to describe 69, actually, now that I think about it. Is it like this? No, that's, like, 17. Because, like, you look, one is a one and one... So, like... Well, whatever... Whenever you're describing somebody's junk as genitals, it kind of it kind of destroys all sexiness. So, I think I already I already killed it. But the is it like the this? You know, it's the, well, no. Is it like this? Is this what it's like? No, it's not. No, it's not. Well, it's close. It was close to that. It was close. You know, you you've got the right idea. Try that the next time. That that um, that you try it. You know, I just found a ruler in my drawer. I know what I'm gonna do with that. I don't want to know what you're gonna do with that. I think you do. You're gonna stick it up your butt, aren't you? Mhm. Mm <laughs> mhm. Mm All right, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on today's episode. Of 69, brothers. <laughs> I stopped recording. That is disgusting. We're still live. I know we are. 69. We're doing it live. 69, brothers, is not... That's not my favorite show. Unqualified Any, Gamers. Anymore. Of anymore. 69, is... brothers podcast. Thanks hey. for viewing. Nice as Spikers.